Okay, so the Elsevier and Stanford University brings out every year a list of researchers, which is called basically top two percent. And this is across two categories. One category is top two percent based on entire life and career based, and the other is on a basis of a single year. So if you look at the basis of a single year, this year like uh, it is on the basis of 2019. uh they created this list based on the citation impact of research that we have already published and on that basis my name is second in india and we also have uh, four other colleagues three other colleagues in the department like professor sushil professor ravi shankar and professor vignesh who is in that list so this is based on individual year citations that our research has got the other is basically a career based impact in the career based impact they consider all the publications that might have started from 1970s onwards of course my research has started only in around 2011 but the citations that is basically a benchmark is considered across a period of some uh, 40 years or so before and on the basis of that people who have actually contributed more than you know uh, 10 articles it is basically top 2% of those researchers so on the basis of that in the career list I am Professor Sushil R. Dell from the department. See, I started when I started my career. I initial days of my career when I did my masters and PhD, I was very sure that I would be joining a career in industry. And in fact, I started my you know initial days in IBM Research Lab and then in Cognizant Consulting. It was then I realized that probably uh, you know the independence that I really lavishly enjoy, the kind of research that I would typically want to explore, does not happen in the industry purely because there are set KPIs and uh, you would have to more align with the industrial targets and the goals that the organization has. At that point of time, we decided that uh, probably if I am in academia. I'll be able to pursue things in terms of my personal choices, preferences, and also in the areas that I can grow in the long run. In the industry, that was not feasible, and that was why uh, I decided that probably uh, because my comfort level was not in terms of pursuing consulting or being a hardcore, you know, salesperson in terms of selling projects and everything. So I decided that probably a core research area would be something that is more suitable for me. So the challenges of research that we see in the Indian ecosystem is very different. Uh, Indian become, although we are considered to be a emerging or even a developing uh, to develop country these days, an Indian typical academic who is working in an institution has too much of teaching load, has too much of administrative load, and a lot of times the access to research resources are not really there. If you just remove some of the handful institutions like IITs and IIMs. predominantly the challenge that indian academics face is getting access to research getting time for research and this is something that is even expedited expedited much more or this is something that is uh, you know kind of expanded or gets much bigger because of resource crunch in terms of undertaking the research and that is a common thing across iits and iims also so if you consider a research budget that many of the foreign universities especially those in the states or say in the singapore have sometimes a research budget is going into millions of dollars a typical project that uh, say ministry of singapore when they fund would be typically around 30 to 50 million dollar and i evaluate some of those projects as an external expert in india if you look at sponsored projects which are coming in from department of science and technology it would be in the tune of maybe 40 50 lakhs at most sometimes in best of cases they may exceed a crore but more majority of the sponsorship projects and everything is just probably 5% or 7% of the budget that is possible as compared to a developed economy like us or singapore or hong kong so i think fund and budget are basic restrictions in terms of how we can create laboratories in which complex experiments can be set up that being said we also as indians have very good ability to carve out ecosystems do a lot of jugaad and then carve out ecosystems in which we can publish in decent journals so earlier before nira franking came into the picture purely because there was no focus and the institutes also did not really 
want faculty members to spend time on research, the research productivity was not there. But now because NIF ranking has come up and also QS ranking has started, you know, pushing a lot for research productivity and impacts, institutions have realized the importance of research and they are allowing faculty members in India to really focus on their research. And as a result, today, if you look at especially the European ecosystem and the Indian ecosystem or the Australian ecosystems, I would say that the research is at par with the best of the schools there. But probably, yes, a little bit of a jump is required when we look at, say, the North American systems in terms of quality of research. So in terms of students, see, uh, I teach a subject like digital marketing. So every year when I teach the subject, there is something new that comes out. A new social media platform might be there, a new feature in Instagram would come out, something new in Facebook will come out. So for me, in the subject of digital marketing, in the subjects related to social media, my students would typically be more used to the platforms and be knowing it much more in detail because they're always spending much more time than I am. So I think that is one thing that I continue to learn from my students that how to use social media, what are the new things which are coming in social media, the business models which are emerging, new platforms which are coming up. So all these things I think I have been learning a lot from my students.